at the transition pictures for Osama bin Laden. He died in 2011 at the age of 54. He was in Pakistan at the time. Abbottabad uh, is called the town. It was named after James Abbott, who was a major in the British Army when the British ruled that area, Abbottabad. And he had this three-story compound there and uh, SEAL Team 6, the US uh, Special Operations uh, crew, went in there and uh, when they found Osama bin Laden, he was on the third floor cowering behind a woman. And he's a tall guy, I think he was like six foot four or something, but he was cowering behind a woman and uh, they just shot him three times. He started Al-Qaeda in 1988 and basically declared war on America. His argument being that since America had done so much damage in the world, particularly in the Middle East, in his view, then it was okay and fair game to kill American civilians. Not just the troops, but civilians. He was buried at sea. They wrapped him in a white sheet, which is Islamic custom, I think, and put him on a table and tipped the table up thinking he would slide into the ocean. And in fact, the table went with it. But he was weighed down with something like 300 pounds of metal and his body went down to the uh, bottom of the ocean and that's where he still is. But there were some rumours about him not having been killed, that maybe, conspiracy theory alert, maybe he had been allowed to escape and there was some kind of deal with the CIA or something. So I went into the pictures for Osama bin Laden and when I went into his energy, there was this same cave, symbolic metaphorical cave. And there he was, right in front of me, but he was on his knees and wailing. I'm blind. I can't see. I can't see. I'm blind. Oh my God, I can't see. He was really panicking, almost hysterical, actually, as he scrambled around on his knees, trying to see where he was going, and he couldn't. Somehow, he made his way across the cave area that I always see. It's like a meet and greet type area. And he just stayed on his knees on the floor and cried and wailed and protested about how unjust this was and it wasn't right and this wasn't fair. His voice just echoed around the place. And then he began crawling around again. Now, of course, you remember when I did Renoir's pictures, I was able to look through his eyes and see what he was seeing, which was blue skies and fields and stuff, because he had a very accessible energy that was very much in sync with my own. I didn't imagine that Osama bin Laden would have that same kind of energy. But I was allowed in. And I quickly went in and I could see through his eyes for a very brief moment. And there was nothing up here. What he could see was all in the bottom half. So there was white up there and then some kind of like, you know those ocular migraines where you get lights everywhere and stuff and you can't see? It's like that. Misty up here and ocular migraine or lighty down there. At this point, I went and looked at how he had died. And as I said, he was shot. But actually, he was shot in the face. That would explain that. But he was wailing. Oh my God, this is so unfair. Why am I here? Protest, protest, protest. Loud, distressed. A victim. This shouldn't have happened to me. And then he reached the rods. About three weeks ago, I did pictures for what would be called a Palestinian martyr. Basically, an Arab terrorist who years ago went into Jerusalem with a backpack full of explosives and blew herself up and a whole bunch of other people. I did her transition pictures. Now, I didn't put up a video because I thought they were rather gruesome and bleak and not the kind of thing that we want to fill our heads with. However, what was interesting about those pictures was that this woman had the same rods as Osama bin Laden. 
representing, I think, a belief system, a meta-narrative that needed to be removed before she, or in this case he, could continue. And as Osama bin Laden went over these rods, it was really painful. It actually not only bruised him, it hurt him for a guy who was already half blind. And as it went, it knocked off some of his belief system. Because you can't take your beliefs with you. You leave those behind. But if they're really ingrained, if your entire life has been about uh, proselytizing and promoting a particular uh, tribal script, a particular viewpoint, a perception of life, and you're trying to take that with you, which is giving you these feelings of victimization, they've got to be knocked off somehow. The whole idea of this process really is to make you light enough to lift. True in life as well. We get so bogged down in problems and opinions and fights and squabbles and earning money, we forget that all these things make us heavier. And you want to be light enough at the end to lift. You want to be able to be raised up by grace and to ascend freely and openly and lovingly and compassionately and so on. That's what you're looking for. That's what we're all looking for. Osama bin Laden clearly had, like the uh, terrorist in, in Jerusalem, clearly had a lot of issues that needed removing. A lot of beliefs, a lot of fixed opinions, rigid adherence to a certain outlook that was completely at odds with the higher frequencies of the universe. These were low consciousness perceptions. And by the time he emerged from these rods, he was a wet rag, still unable to see, crawling along the ground, dragging his bruised and broken feet and legs behind him. No matter how much they may profess to believe in a religion or God or whatever, if on the inside they have lost their connection with the divine, if they're not loving and compassionate and kind and forgiving and so on, if they've lost that and they've become divorced from that and the only thing that will give them any kind of feeling of worth is a gun, a weapon, they have a long distance to go to be congruent with their soul's path. At this point, he was past caring. He struggles across this cave that has the dome in that I always see, that light. And there's no resistance left. He feels like such a victim. He's so resigned to never getting his power back, because his power was external, not internal, that essentially he just crawls into the light, just drags himself into the light, and with one last effort, goes and disappears. But it was such a lesson to learn. We don't need external factors to make us feel worthy because of our connection to the divine. We are automatically worthy. We automatically have a place at the table. And anybody who waves a weapon and says, look at me, I'm so powerful, is really saying, I feel worthless. I feel disconnected from the divine. Nothing on the outside can give us power, can make us great, can validate us the way self-acceptance can. And someone as notorious as Osama bin Laden didn't know that, apparently. <sighs> okay, that's that. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, share. If you would, I'd be very, very grateful. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Cash Peters. That'd be good, too. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>